Does a husband have greater authority than his wife in Islam? Part 2. Assalamu alaikum. I'm Muneeb Ali. Welcome to another video on the Quran Study Channel. So, as you know, we are studying these important topics from the Quran in relation to women's rights, particularly around marriage. We have already studied whether a man can hit his wife, which is a subject of much misinterpretation and misconception. And last week, we did part one of the next topic which was does a husband have higher authority than his wife is the husband the boss is he in command and we completed half of that study in part one you can find part one on our youtube channel please don't forget to go over to our youtube channel to have a look at this video because it is very important to understand that part and while you're there don't forget to like the video if it's useful and subscribe to our channel because we are launching new videos about the Quran every week. So part one really was about understanding from the Quran what God says to us about the standing of a husband and a wife. The standing of each of them relative to the other. Whether a husband is more superior to the wife or vice versa. Now of course we're not going to go over all of that again in this part which is why I suggested you make sure you've had a look at part one but in summary the main thing we looked at was this word here azwajan because God says to us in the Quran that he created for us pairs azwajan and this word was really important we spent a lot of time studying what this word azwajan means recall we broke it down into its root letters and we understood what it means. And then we spent quite a bit of time thinking about what azwajan, pairs, really means in practice. We studied how it means that when you are a pair, you are equal. We studied that when you are a pair, you work as a team. We studied that one is not superior to the other. And the important point is that both work in harmony and they bring balance. Think about the fact that God has blessed us with, for example, a pair of hands, a pair of feet, a pair of ears, a pair of eyes, so many pairs on our body and think about what we get by these being in pairs. We get balance. And if one is not working properly, we feel unbalanced. If one of our ears does not hear properly, we, we feel unbalanced. If one of our eyes is not working properly, we try and address that imbalance. So when Allah uses the word azwajan for the spouse, think about how both play a part in bringing balance in each other's lives. Harmony. That is why Allah is using the word azwajan. That is the equal stature of both husband and wife. So remember, a pair, a husband and a wife are a pair. That's what we studied last time. And then where we left it, and this is what we're going to be doing today, is we said we will study two particular verses which are often misunderstood and people understand them to mean that men are superior to women or have higher authority than their wives. And we're going to be studying that today. So the first one is this, Surah An-Nisa, which is chapter 4 and verse 34. Men are in charge of women because Allah hath made the one of them to excel the other. So when you read this, you do get the impression, hmm, okay, well, men are in charge. And that they excel the other. This is the phrase here. Now let me say this. This is an issue with the translation. right? This is not an issue with the Quran or the words of God. It is a matter of 
an inaccurate translation. And there are some translations which are inaccurate and others which are correct. So I've looked at one here which is incorrect because a number of people cite this translation when discussing this. And the word which is misunderstood is Qawwamuna. Okay? Where here the translation is in charge of women. It would suggest that they are the boss. Let's look at this word Qawwamuna. Qawwamuna is made of, of the root letters Qaf, Waw, Mim. Now there are several meanings of this but in the Quran whenever Allah has used the word Qawwamina or Qawwamuna its meanings are custodian, responsible for providing strength and protection, taking care of somebody's needs and providing for, custodian, a caretaker. So the meaning of this phrase here is not men are in charge of women, it is in fact men are protectors of, carers of and providers for women. Do you see the difference? They are caretakers of women, they protect them, they're not in charge. What Allah is saying here, this is a responsibility. It is not a matter of superiority. It is a responsibility. It's a responsibility and authority to protect, not to oppress. That's really important. Protection, not oppression. This is not a master-submitter relationship. This is a protection responsibility. This is not saying that the husband can be a dictator to say, I'm protecting you and therefore I will be your dictator. You must submit to me. No, the master submitter relationship only relates to us and God. God is our master and we are his submitters. That's very important. The only dictation comes from God. But then we should also have a look at the second part of this verse where the translation sometimes is, because Allah has made the one of them excel the other. Again, this will suggest that, well, you know, one is more superior. But this is not what Allah is saying. Bima fadalallahu ba'dahum ala ba'din. Fadalallahu means that he has bestowed on some certain things more than the other. So what Allah is saying is that the husband has certain capabilities, which are more than the wife will normally have. And in the same way, the wife will have certain capabilities which are more than the husband will have. And because of the external strength normally given to man, man has been given responsibility by God to be the caretaker of his wife. That is what this verse is saying. He has to take care of the physical side of things and the emotional side of things of his wife and family. This is not about superiority within the overall relationship within a marriage. This is about the responsibility that comes in relation to protection. It's very important for us to understand the difference between how a marriage overall works and that both are equal and equivalent. But then for individual responsibilities based on the capabilities, then you have your authority within that responsibility, okay? So when it comes to protection, that is the responsibility normally of the man. And he must of course then have authority to protect his wife. But that does not mean that he can abuse that responsibility and that authority and that he can oppress his wife. Does that make sense, that difference? Okay, let's move on. Now, this is really important. I said that this is not about dictating, this is not about oppression, this is not a master submitter relationship. This verse makes this very clear. Now this, this is a verse which applies generally to how we interact with anybody in all of our affairs. This is not just to do with marriage, but it applies to marriage as well. Allah says in Surah Ashura 42 verse 38, that Allah's reward is better for those who respond to the Lord establish salawat, conduct their affairs by mutual consultation. Conduct your affairs by mutual consultation. What is Allah telling us here? He's telling us that both husband and wife, yes, they have their respective responsibilities, but they must consult with each other. They must consult because 
naturally when you are a team and you're looking to make decisions in life, when you consult with each other, you make a better decision. You see things that you by yourself will not see. So consultation is an action which has been instructed by our Lord. And again, making it very clear that a marriage is not a master submitter relationship. We must be very clear about that. Okay, the second verse. Now, this is Surah Al-Baqarah, chapter 2, verse 228. So the bit which is relevant to our conversation today is this bit here. وَلِلْرِجَالِ alayhinna darajatun, And men are a degree above them. So people take this part of the verse and then they say, well, you see Allah is saying that men have a degree of authority above their wives. Now there is a big flaw in this method. This verse has absolutely nothing to do with authority. This verse is all about divorce proceedings. There is a whole chain of verses around this verse which describes the procedure for a divorce in detail. And what this verse is about is when a divorce is almost complete and the wife is in a waiting period, a three month waiting period, the purpose of which is to establish whether she is pregnant. This verse has nothing to do with authority or anything like that. When people take words out of a verse without taking into account the context at all, then they will not be guided. They will misrepresent, misinterpret the verse. And that's what has happened here. This is not saying that men have a degree of authority or superiority over their wives. Not at all. We will study this verse in detail when we do do a study about divorce procedures in the Quran. But what this verse is saying is that men have a degree of responsibility above their wives to try and rectify the situation where the wife that's being divorced has been found to potentially be pregnant. Because what God is saying is that when a wife is in this vulnerable situation and there's potentially a child involved, it is best for everybody that their relationship is rectified and the husband and wife come together. And that naturally makes sense for the functioning of a good family, particularly for the child as well, not just for the wife and the husband. So Allah is encouraging the husband and wife to try and rectify the situation when this happens and come together again. And because the husband is the caretaker, as we studied earlier, and is the provider, what Allah is saying here is that the husband has a degree of responsibility that's greater in this case to try and see if this can be brought back together again. That is what Allah is saying in this verse. Not that the husband is more superior or has greater rights or has more authority. That has nothing to do with this verse. So I hope that is clear. Okay, so now that we have studied what those verses really mean and we really understand the standing of a husband and a wife in a marriage, let's summarise what we've learned over the course of both parts one and today's part two. The first is that man and woman are both equal in the eyes of God. There is no difference between the two. Man, woman, husband or wife. The second thing is that husband and wife are a pair, a zwajan. As I mentioned, this is a key word which describes how a man and woman need to live in marriage. They are a pair. There is no superiority or higher authority of one over the other in the overall relationship that they have once they are married. That institute of marriage is of equal standing for both. Third, that Allah tells us that responsibilities are divided within this team of a husband and wife. Okay, so for example, Allah says that the husband is responsible for the protection of his wife, for taking care. Protection, not oppression. And yes, where you have different responsibilities, you will have your individual authority within that responsibility, right? In order to help to progress the decisions around that point where you're responsible. But that does not mean that you will not do that without consultation 
Allah has prescribed consultation for us. So it is not an authoritarian relationship. And lastly, we must not forget that the relationship between a husband and wife has to be built on the concepts of fairness, honor, love and kindness. Allah has used the word bil ma'roof when it comes to husband and wife repeatedly in the Quran. Repeatedly, bil ma'roof. For me, azwajan and bil ma'roof are the two key words which help us to answer all the questions that we are asking when it comes to the relationship between a husband and wife and comfort for each other. So you imagine this relationship. It's going to be consultative, it's going to be teamwork, it's going to be progressive, it's going to be loving and kind, it's going to be respectful, it's going to be dignified. And now let's think about what many Muslim families operate under. It is the truth in many cultures in Muslim countries, the man is considered to be superior. The man is considered to be the boss. And even women understand and assume and think and believe that they must submit to the husband's wishes in order to please God. That is the truth. It is an unfortunate truth. But we must turn back to the Quran. We must turn back to the word of our God. We must turn back to the word of our Creator. We must return to the Quran because the Quran is the source of the truth. So I hope you understood that. Let me know whether you have any further questions about this matter or whether you have a different view. Let me know in the comment section. I would love to hear from you. So this is what we were looking to study today. And we've now completed this. Now we have all these other topics. These are all important topics that we are discussing which impact women today in Muslim households. So make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel in order to be notified when we upload these study sessions for you. And if you found this video useful, please do like the video and share it with others in order to spread the truth. Thank you for watching. I hope you found that useful. Until next week, Assalamu Alaikum.